Good evening and welcome to the Carnegie Town Hall. This meeting of the City Council will begin in a few moments. The City Council meets on the first, second, and third Tuesday of each month at 7 p.m. and serves as the City's policymaking and legislative body. Each meeting is governed by Robert's Rule of Order unless those guidelines conflict with City Ordinance or Charter. City Council meetings offer an opportunity for citizens to speak directly to their elected representatives. Those in attendance are invited to address the Council during the public input segment at the beginning of the agenda. At that time, any issue that is not subject to formal action later in the agenda can be addressed. Testimony that concerns a resolution or an ordinance's second reading is only allowed when those specific agenda items are being addressed by the Council. When addressing the Council, citizens should speak directly into the microphones at the podium and state their names for the record after being recognized by the Chair. To accommodate and respect all viewpoints, citizen comments are limited by ordinance to no more than five minutes each. Comments should be respectful and focused on providing new information that will benefit the Council's deliberative process. By City Ordinance, all remarks must be addressed to the City Council as a body and not to any City Council member, including the Mayor. The Chair reserves the right to limit the number of speakers. City Council meetings are broadcast live on CityLink and online at SiouxFalls.org. Information regarding the City Council, its committees, meetings, briefings, and members is available by visiting SiouxFalls.org slash council or by calling the Council office at 605-367-8085. Thank you for your interest in Sioux Falls City Government. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to tonight's City Council meeting. It is Tuesday, June 20th. Uh, first of all, we'd like to introduce you to your city council. Council members Staley. Here. Erickson. Here. Erpenbach. Here. Kylie. Here. Neitzert. Here. Rolfing. Here. Selberg. Present. Starr. Here. Councilors, thanks for being here again tonight. We appreciate it. Uh, we have Dr. Eric McCandless back uh, to lead us in our invocation tonight. Dr. Eric, thank you for being here. We appreciate it. Uh, he is from Empire Baptist Temple here in Sioux Falls. Uh, what we'd ask is that you stand for uh, Dr. Eric's Invocation, and then remain standing, please, for our Pledge of Allegiance. Doctor? Our Father, we thank you for the liberties that you spell out in the Word of God. And specifically tonight, we thank you for the privilege of self-governance, Lord, that we have the right to, to consider and plot and plan the future of our people and our nations. And Lord, we thank you for that honor and that liberty. Now, Lord, we ask for wisdom. We ask for your guidance through even the smallest decision. May it be bathed with your presence that there may be glory and honor for years to come based on these meetings. So, Lord, bless these ladies and these men that sit up here. Give them your guidance. So we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, Council will commence our meeting. Uh, commence our meeting with the uh, consent agenda. Any motions or changes to that, please? Move to approve, Erickson. Second, Selbrick. Council Vice Chair uh, Erickson would like to. Um, Get the consent agenda approved, seconded by Council, Councilor Selberg. If there's no discussion, a roll call vote, please. Council Member Staley? Erickson? <laughs> Erpenbach? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Neitzert? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Selberg? Yes. Starr? Yes. That has passed 8 to 0. Now our regular agenda, Council. Any uh, changes to that? Move to approve, Erickson. Second, Kylie. Council Vice Chair Kylie has made a motion to approve our agenda tonight, seconded by Councilor Chair Kylie. Uh, all those in, or uh, uh, roll call vote, please. Sorry. Council Member Staley? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Kylie? 
Yes. Neitzert? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Selberg? Yes. Starr? Yes. That is fast seat to zero. Thanks, Council. Folks, welcome. Thanks for being here tonight. We really appreciate it. Uh, this is an opportunity for you to engage the Council in our public input portion of the meeting. Uh, please just come forward. You can speak on really any topic that is of interest to you. Just introduce yourself to the people of our great city. Uh, we've been asking that you keep your comments to five minutes or less, please. And then if you could just address the council as a whole, uh, that would also be appreciative. And just always remember, uh, just try to be as professional as, uh, as you can. Uh, no need to raise your voice or, or anything like that. And then we'll certainly listen to you intently. Folks, anybody interested? Welcome. Good evening. Bob Colby here. You know, sometimes people like myself come before you and, and uh, people say, why do they always come forward? They always are criticizing and always giving, uh, pointing at things that are not necessarily the highlight of the activity of the city, county, or the state. Because part of it is because the good things that are done, <clears throat> the people on that side of the bench will take credit and, and uh, publicize what they feel are the good things. And the people on this side of the bench are those who are looking at things and trying to see that with the joint in a mutual uh, concern for the city, the county, whatever, that they're trying to make it better. Once in a while, I, people need a refresher course, and myself included. And since property taxes are a big thing in this community, and that's what we call for the lifeblood of both the governing of the city and the county, it's always bothered me that we look at property tax as a means of support, but it's a necessary means of support. We have sales tax, which is also a means of support, but that is even of more concern because we have, in spite of the fact we have increased sales tax revenues, we have a declining sales, sales tax income for the same piece of goods. Mom and pop stores will sell a, 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 an item for $1,000 and they'll take the 6.5%. The... Walmarts, they sell the same item that the mom and pop would for, and I'll use this thousand dollars, they'll sell for nine hundred dollars and they get six point five percent. And now we have Amazon and they'll take that same thousand dollar item and sell it for seven hundred and ninety nine dollars and they pay this we get them now to pay the six point five percent. So you can see what I'm trying to say is where the property, t the uh, sales tax for the same piece of goods is going down. And this is what the city lives on and what the, uh, and the city lives on that. The county does. The county only lives on the property tax and the county and the city split about 25% of the property tax. One item that I pointed out to one of our superintendents of schools for the community school here was that it takes about three years of property tax for the average home to pay for one year of education of a student in Sioux Falls. So you live, have to live in your house 36 years to pay for 12 years of education. And if you have more than two kids, if you have two kids, you aren't gonna be paying for their education. And if you had three or four, that doesn't compute. So what we have, sometimes the school districts say, we want more kids, we want more kids. The more children, the more students you have, the less likely you're going to have income to support that. What you really need is agricultural property, which is a diminished form of, of property tax, but you need industrial development. And the industry doesn't provide children it provides jobs for people, but the property tax from the industry is what's going to support the school. 
I kind of feel sorry for the whoever sits in these seats because Sioux Falls is moving from a big, small town to a small, big town. The difference being, in Sioux Falls now, if you're in the Northwest, you know what's going on in the Southeast. What's going on in the Southwest, you know what's going on in the Northeast. It's getting to the point where it's more difficult to understand what's going on out in the periphery. And when you get to a big city, it's a, an amalgamation of small communities that operate more or less independently underneath the guise of the large city. And that means you're going to have to provide different kinds of law enforcement, fire protection, and ambulance service. I think that Sioux Falls has had a nice past, a golden age. We're now transmit, we're transposing into that larger community. The county is the law enforcement of the state. Mr. Colby, thank you very much, sir. We appreciate your time tonight. Thank you. Folks, did anybody else want to engage the council? Welcome. Mr. Mayor, City Council members, Gary Myers, uh, Sioux Falls, REMSA uh, board chair. Uh, was involved in the, um, and listened in on the, the public, um, uh, the, the work session last week with the City Council and wanted to take an opportunity from the REMSA perspective to add a few of my own comments. Um, I've been a member of REMSA for five years now and been the chair for two years. Uh, about that long. Uh, it's something I've always wanted to do and be involved in since I moved to Sioux Falls. It's, uh, it's not because it has given me any, any power or influence of any kind. Uh, obviously, I don't get any uh, benefit personally, uh, bank account-wise or any other way in, in being involved in REMSA, REMSA. It's really because I wanted to, um, I have a genuine love and interest in, in EMS, and I've really wanted to uh, be a part of the decisions and the response uh, process, working with city uh, leaders, uh, the, the different departments, our provider, um, and uh, the REMSA Medical Board, and all those that make up the EMS system to make the EMS system in, in Sioux Falls the best it can be. That's why I became a member of REMSA. I've been involved in EMS personally for 20 years, uh, both uh, in the paid and volunteer venues. Uh, I've directed a South Dakota EMS service in a class one city for about seven years and worked at the state level on EMS systems. So I definitely have a, a, a background in EMS and a genuine, again, interest and love in EMS. Currently, I work for the American Heart Association. I have the privilege to serve, uh, to work with EMS agencies and hospitals all over the Midwest, uh, working on quality improvement programs and EMS systems uh, for heart attack and stroke patients. Again, I have a genuine interest in EMS. That's the only reason that I am a member of the REMSA board. Uh, I want to thank the mayor, the city council members um, for approving my position uh, and uh, appointing me and approving my position on REMSA. Uh, even through these recent hectic times, uh, through everything that we've talked about in the media and at city council meetings and at REMSA boards, it's been an honor for me to be a citizen representative on the REMSA board. Um, much has been said about REMSA uh, here at council meetings, uh, work sessions, uh, smaller meetings, in the media. Uh, and I'd really appreciate uh, all of the public support that many of the council members have, have uh, uh, expressed for REMSA as a board and the REMSA members. And I appreciate all of the, the council members' um, very, uh, um, excuse me, uh, your passionate support and passionate interest in the emergency response in the city. Uh, I, I thank you all for that as well. But let's, be, but let's be clear on one thing. We have a great system in this city, and we cannot forget that. We cannot get lost in what is, what is talked about in the media, what is uh, hashed and rehashed over the last, now it seems like a year or more, better, uh, in the media and here at the council meetings. We cannot get lost in those discussions and not forget uh, a group of citizens, two groups of citizens that are being affected by the constant conversation and the constant rehashing of the issues. One of the group that I want to make sure that we are thinking about, we are all thinking about, are those who do not come forward. Those who are sitting, my neighbor, my uh, friends, your grandmother, your brother, who are out there in our city and are concerned now and don't have confidence in our EMS system. When, when, we, when the media and when 
we in a public venue constantly critique to the nth degree and don't think that 95% is good enough or that is, is all the mutual aid agreements that we have exactly what we should have. We are, we are taking away the confidence in our system for the citizens and you represent them as well. Uh, and when my neighbor comes to me and wonders if they, if they should have confidence in our EMS system, I say yes, and I hope that you all can too. The other group that I want you to consider are the employees of the EMS agency that we talk about day in or, or every time this comes up. They are our citizens of the city of Sioux Falls as well, and we need to take them into consideration. And those are the ones, those are the people, the employees of Paramedics Plus in our EMS system that I am the most concerned about every time this comes up. Uh, they are citizens of Sioux Falls, and uh, they're, they can't come up and, and make, uh, they don't come up and make these, these statements. They sit in the back and listen. Um, they have, members of Paramedics Plus have, Plus have been criticized and harassed on the street when at post after all of these discussions, and that's not fair to them. And we should defend them as well because they are working for the citizens of Sioux Falls and they are citizens of Sioux Falls. And yes, that does happen. They have been uh, harassed and uh, gestures have been given to them as they sit and wait to respond. So I ask that, um, uh, that you trust what REMSA does in the process. And I ask that you trust the REMSA board, the Me REMSA medical board, what you've appointed all those people to do. And it looks like I'm about ready to get shut down. So thank you for your time. And please trust the process. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your stewardship as well. We appreciate it. Folks, anybody else? Very good. Thank you. Item 16. Item 16, request to include video lottery terminals with the new 2017-18 retail mall beverage license for Smokehouse Partners Incorporated, Cody Smokehouse, 6401 South Louise Avenue, pending final inspections per fire health and building services. Number 17, new 2017-18 retail mall beverage license for Golden Coin Casino Incorporated, Golden Coin Casino 3, 3505 West 49th Street, CUP not required, pending final inspections per fire health and building services. Item 18, request to include video lottery terminals with the new 2017-18 retail malt beverage license for Golden Coin Casino Incorporated, Golden Coin Casino 3, 3505 West 49th Street, pending final inspections per fire health and building services. 19, new 2017-18 retail malt beverage license for Pinball Incorporated, Jokers Number no. 5, 2220 South Minnesota Avenue, Suite 100, with conditional use permit 6438-2017, being approved on April 5th, 2017, pending final inspections per fire and building services. 20, request to include video lottery terminals with the new 2017-18 retail malt beverage license for Pinball Incorporated, Jokers Number no. 5, 2220 South Minnesota Avenue, Suite 100, pending final inspections per fire and building services. 21, new 2017-18 retail malt beverage license for Pinball Incorporated, Jokers Number no. 6, 2220 South Minnesota Avenue, Suite 102, with conditional use permit 6438-2017 being approved on April 5th, 2017, pending final inspections per fire and building services. 22, request to include video lottery terminals with the new 2017-18 retail malt beverage license for Pinball Incorporated, Jokers Number no. 6, 2220 South Minnesota Avenue, Suite 102, pending final inspections per fire and building services. 23, new 2017 retail wine license for Wood Grain Brewing Company, LLC, Wood Grain Brewing Company, LLC, 101 South Phillips Avenue, Suite 100. 24, special one-day malt beverage and special one-day wine licenses for Catering America, Chef Dominique's Catering, to be operated at the University Center, 4801 North Career Avenue, for a social on August 15th, 2017. 25, special one-day liquor license for Ramcota Companies Incorporated, Best Western Ramcota Inn, to be operated at a, to be operated at a Vera Prairie Center, 1000 East 23rd Street for a retirement celebration on June 26, 2017. Good evening, Jamie. Good evening, Jamie Palmer with licensing. Item 16 um, is a request to add video lottery terminals to a license that has been previously approved by the council. They have since decided that they would like to um, offer video lottery terminals. So that, that's why that request is before you tonight. Item 17 and 18 go together for one casino. It's the malt beverage license and the accompanying video lottery re request. Items 19 through 22 
are two license requests um, submitted by one applicant for two separate casinos. They will be next door to one another, um, but they plan to meet the separation requirements as outlined in our ordinances. And the applicant is present here tonight if you have any questions for him. Item 23 is um, a request for a retail wine. This applicant currently holds a retail beer license with uh, South Dakota Farm Wine. However, they wish to expand their offerings of wine beyond the South Dakota Farm Wine. So this license, if, if approved, will allow that. And items 24 and 25 are special requests that meet the state law requirements. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. Jamie, thank you. Council, any questions or? Motions? Move to approve, Neitzer. Second, Staley. Councilor Neitzer has made that motion to approve these items. Second by Councilor Staley. Thank you. Um, if there's no discussion, a roll vote, please. Council Members Staley? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Neitzer? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Selberg? Yes. Starr? Yes. Thanks, Council. Let us pass 8 to 0. Item 26, please. Second reading, an ordinance of the city of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, declaring certain real property of the city surplus and authorizing the disposition thereof. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. Tonight, this is the second reading to declare this a remnant piece of property that was purchased originally to realign the intersection of 8th Street uh, and Cliff Avenue. That work has been done. We've set aside adequate uh, room for a future right turn lane, a bus stop, and a potential monument sign to direct traffic into the downtown. And so what's, what's remaining is uh, ready to be sold with your approval. Thanks, Mark. Uh, folks, a second reading. Did anybody want to talk about this with the council? Very good. Councilors? Councilor Starr? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, Director Cotter, give me an idea. Have we checked with all the affordable housing solutions and the, the nonprofits that we normally work with for housing? I think at one time, um, I don't know if it was affordable housing solutions, was looking at constructing something on this property or have we determined this, that there aren't any of those groups that are interested at this point? Um, I personally haven't. I think one of the things that we've looked at with this piece of property, and there's one more slide if we could advance to it, is just with the amount of property that was removed from the previous uh, build and with the access concerns close to the intersection. I think that those conversations can likely still be had, Councillor, because tonight's first step is just to declare that the city no longer has a need for it and it is surplus. So I can certainly check with community development. One of the factors has been is just with the proximity to the intersection and access concerns, it's likely the most valuable to adjacent properties to uh, assemble them and, and maybe create additional parking for them. But I can certainly... Uh, make that if you step. would please um, just because I, I thought there was a plan that was worked out for and I'm not sure what group it was if I'm, I'm not remembering what group it was but they uh, had worked with the church across the street for parking that they would need and I thought there was a plan that was started and gone down the road and I just if there's some interest that way it probably makes sense too so to okay do that. I'll certainly um, tie that down for you uh, I'm not aware of those conversations okay Councilor Neitzert. I know we're not there yet, but how would a piece of land like this be sold by the city? Is that an auction or is that a, a real like a real estate broker? Our our real estate team recommends um, after it gets published twice in the newspaper to offer it by sealed bids. And so we do a number of them either by sealed bids or auction. Um, state law allows us to use a real estate broker. We just rarely do. And so our two most common ways is auction or sealed bid they think the most effective way for this one is to go by sealed bids. Okay, thank you. Okay. Learn something new every day. Good job, yeah. Councilor Nature. Appreciate it. I, Council, would anybody want to make a motion on this item? Move approval, Rolfing. Second, Erpenbach. Councilor Rolfing has made a motion to approve item 26. Seconded by Councilor Erpenbach. A roll call vote, please. Council Member Staley? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Neitzert? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Selberg? Yes. Starr? Yes. That is passed 8 to 0. Item 27, please. Set a date of hearing and second reading for Wednesday, July 5th, 2017 at 7 p.m. for item 27. An ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, rezoning property located at 1000 East 60th Street, north from the C2 Commercial Neighborhood and Streetcar District, 
to the, the I-1 Light Industrial District, Petition Number 6589-2017, and amending the official zoning map of the City of Sioux Falls. Planning Commission recommends approval 8-0. to zero. Uh, Jason Bieber representing Planning and Building Services. Uh, this is an application by Paul Reynolds. Uh, the owner is Thompson Properties, LLC. As you can see, it's located up on 60th Street, about a half a block west of South Cliff Avenue. Uh, it's roughly 3.79 acres in size, and the purpose of this uh, application is the they are looking at constructing a building for equipment sales and repair on this lot. Councilors, any questions on this item? Move approval. Second, Urban Buck. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Rolfing has made a motion to set a date of hearing and second reading for Wednesday, July 5th. Seconded by Councilor Urban Bach. A roll call, please. Council Member Staley? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Neitzert? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Selberg? Yes. Starr? Yes. Thank you, Councilors. That is passed 8 to 0. Item 28. Set a date of hearing and second reading for Wednesday, July 5th, 2017 at 7 p.m. for item 28. An ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota rezoning property located at 400 Northwest Avenue from the REC Recreation and RA2 Apartment Residential Moderate Density Districts to the C2 Commercial Neighborhood and Streetcar District, petition number 6591-2017, and amending the official zoning map of the City of Sioux Falls. Planning Commission recommends approval 8-0. to zero. Uh, The applicant here is also Paul Reynolds. The owner is Grevlo Incorporated. Uh, it's located at the northeast corner of 6th and Northwest Avenue. Uh, it's roughly 0 0.02 acres in size for the rezoning. Uh, the purpose of this specific rezoning is uh, this uh, current vacant gas station is going to be taken over by Shop and Cart, and then they are looking at constructing an addition on the north side of the existing building. Thank you, Jason. Uh, Councilor Buck. Thank you. Jason, can you talk about um, the use of the, the, the potential use of a putting a casino in here and will there be seating and those kinds of things is that part of the plan that I believe is their plan for the addition they did uh, obtain a conditional use a couple of months back for an on sale alcohol beverage establishment which I believe is they're looking at doing a casino um, with that being constructed we do look at parking make sure they have enough parking um, and all that different stuff but I believe that's what's going in that proposed addition on the north side um, does this does this kind of thing require any kind of neighborhood meeting? The conditional use would have been a public hearing with uh, the planning commission for the on sale alcohol. Uh, we normally just advise the applicant to have a neighborhood meeting. We don't have specific requirements for that. This application is really just to clean up the property. It looks like over a certain time that they've acquired some pieces from adjacent properties, and that's why they've kind of been zoned. Con Conservation and RA2. Just, um, I've had some comments from the neighborhood about this particular um, proposal. It did used to be a gas station, which is one thing, but um, now it's not been anything for a while. And now we're putting a casino within literally feet of doors to apartments. And so that, that RA2 next to that is a, is a multifamily housing there to the um, east of that building. So I have been hearing concerns, just throwing that out there. Um, I'm not really excited about supporting this one um, with the casino added to it. Um, so I'll be doing a little more digging in, but just to. And, just and I don't believe that we had anyone show up at the public hearing for the conditional use, um, if I remember correctly, but. I'll follow up, thanks. Thank you, Councilor Buck. Would anybody be willing to set a date of hearing second reading for this item? Thank you, Council Chair. Second, Selbert. Councilor by Councilor Rolfing, thank you. Um, a roll call, please. Council Member Staley? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Neitzert? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Selberg? Yes. Starr? Yes. That has passed 8 to 0. Item 29, please. Set a date of hearing and second reading for Wednesday, July 5th, 2017 at 7 p.m. for item 29. An ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota rezoning property located at 2308 South Duluth Avenue from the S2 Institutional Campus PUD District to the RA1 Apartment Residential Low Density District Petition Number 6604-2017 and amending the official zoning map of the City of Sioux Falls. Planning Commission recommends approval 8-0. to zero. 
Uh, the applicant and owner here of this property is Augustana University. Uh, it's located just west of South Minnesota Avenue and south of West 31st Street. It's roughly 0.67 acres in size, and you can see by the area it currently contains two buildings uh, used, I believe, for student housing for Augustana. Uh, the purpose of this rezoning is Augustana is looking at um, selling this particular building um, and no longer use it for student housing. Uh, therefore, they are looking at taking it out of their uh, campus uh, planned unit development and going to a straight multifamily zoning um, so somebody can purchase it and continue to run it as an apartment complex. Councilor Staley. Um, what kind of a response have you had from the neighbors on this one? We have had some concerns uh, from the neighbors to the west, I believe, about what can be built there. I think it's important to note that if it stays the way that it's zoned now and somebody would come in and purchase it, they could actually tear all this down and do a three-story and 48-unit apartment complex there. Um, if it does get rezoned to that RA1, that would be the maximum size of only two stories and 24 units. So they're, they're actually down zoning it a little bit. I think the plan is nobody's interested in demolishing it, just kind of running it as is. Council, uh, thank you. Would anybody want to set a data hearing and second reading for Wednesday, July 5th for this item? So moved. Second. Councilor Rolfing's made that um, motion. Seconded by Council Chair Kiley. A roll call vote, please. Council Member Staley? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erfenbach? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Neitzert? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Selberg? Yes. Starr? Yes. That is passed 8 to 0. Item 30, please. Set a date of hearing and second reading for Wednesday, July 5th, 2017 at 7 p.m. for item 30. An ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota rezoning property located at 3008 East 26th Street from the RA1 Apartment Residential Low Density District to the RA2 Apartment Residential moderate density district, petition number 6704-2017, and amending the official zoning map of the city of Sioux Falls. Planning Commission recommends approval 8-0. to zero. Uh, The applicant and owner here is Affordable Housing Solutions. Uh, it's located kind of sandwiched between Cherry Creek Grill and uh, the Holiday Gas Station on 26th Street. It's roughly 1.2 acres in size. Uh, the purpose of this specific rezoning is Affordable Housing Solutions is looking at raising the existing apartment complex and then constructing a three-story, 39-unit uh, apartment complex in its place with an associated parking lot. Um, they have been, uh, been some concerns from the existing residents there. Affordable Housing Solutions has worked with them, um, and they are going to pay to relocate these residents to different buildings that they have. And then once this uh, apartment complex is complete, they will then pay for them to uh, relocate back to this apartment. Interesting. Council, would anybody want to set a date of hearing and second reading for Wednesday, July 5th for this item? So moved. Second. Council Chair Kylie has made that motion. Seconded by Councilor Rolfing. A roll call vote, please. Council Member Staley? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Neitzer? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Selberg? Yes. Starr? Yes. That has passed 8 to 0. I'm 31. Set a date of hearing and second reading for Wednesday, July 5th, 2017 at 7 p.m. for item 31. An ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota rezoning property located at 1826 South Grange Avenue from the S2 Institutional Campus PUD District to the RS Single Family Residential Suburban District, petition number 6726-17, and amending the official zoning map of the City of Sioux Falls. Planning Commission recommends approval 8-0. to zero. Uh, the applicant here and owner is also Augustana University. Uh, this is a similar request to 29. Um, it's located just north of the university. It's roughly 0.2 acres. Uh, this lot does include a single family house with, an, a, with a detached garage on it. Augustana is looking at doing the same kind of thing. They're looking at removing this as part of their campus and then uh, selling it to somebody for a single family residential home. Thank you, Jason. Councilors, anybody? Move to set a date of hearing and second reading for Wednesday, July 5th. Second, Staley. Councilor Chair Kiley has made that motion. Second by Councilor Staley. Thank you both. A roll call vote, please. Council Member Staley. Yes. Erickson. Yes. Erpenbach. Yes. Kiley. Yes. Neitzert. Yes. Rolfing. Yes. Selberg. Yes. Starr. Yes. That has passed 8 to 0. Item 32. Set a date of hearing and second reading for Tuesday, July 18, 2017, at 7 p.m. for item 32. An ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, amending the Code of Ordinances of the City by revising planning and zoning application fees. Planning Commission recommends approval 8 to 0.
this is an application by the uh, City of Sioux Falls Planning Department. Uh, we are looking at uh, amending our fee uh, fees for four or five applications. Uh, the first one I'll run through here real quick is is our rezoning fee. We're looking at increasing the rezoning fee by about seventy-five dollars, uh, which would take us to a total of six hundred and fifty dollars per application. Uh, it's pr right now it's five seventy-five. Uh, just to kind of run through some rezoning fees for some comparable cities in the Midwest, um, we'd still be lower to significantly lower than um, lower than St. Cloud by about 25 bucks. City of Rochester currently charges $1,900, so we'd be considerably lower. And then the city of Lincoln, Nebraska, it's uh, $988 for rezoning. Uh, so we'd still be considerable uh, lower than the rest of those cities in the Midwest. Uh, we're also looking at increasing the fee for by $75 for initial development plans, uh, final development plans, and preliminary subdivision plans. Uh, those would go from $275 to $350. Uh, the reason for these is uh, is these applications were new with the shape places, or two of them were new with the shape places zoning ordinance. And at that time, I don't think we really realized how uh, staff uh, staff how much staff time would go into these applications and coordination with uh, other departments. Uh, therefore, that we're looking at raising that fee to kind of to kind of go along with how much time uh, we put in and the other departments put in on those. And then our last one is we're looking at uh, increasing the fee for uh, petitioned annexation. Um, that would go from 300 to 350, and this is similar to the number two. Uh, we do have to send this out to about 40 or 50 people, and it includes many, or the two counties, it includes a school district, um, the state, and so it takes a lot of staff time from a, from a lot of departments and coordination um, with the applicants and the public hearing process. So we feel that uh, that extra $50 will help uh, recoup some of our costs in them. Councilor Steele? <coughs> I'm going to be voting no on this. Um, I'm committed to affordable living for our citizens, and to me that is um, keeping fees um, and taxes low. And so I'm, I just want to make that statement. Councilor Muck. I would um, encourage my colleagues to vote for this. Um, in continuing to uh, require people to pay the fee that, it co that, that covers our costs then helps keeps our taxes down. And so this is a, this is a user fee only. Uh, Councilor Silver. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Jason, when's the last time we raised these fees? Um, the rezoning fee, the last time we raised it was uh, 2015, and that was because of the um, House amendment for the increase in signs, the size of the signs. So we raised it to cover our costs for the signs. Otherwise, it hadn't been raised since Shape Places was effective in 2014. Um, number two and three, those fees haven't been raised since Shape Places was effective in 2014. Okay, thank you. Council, would anybody want to set a date of hearing and second reading uh, for uh, July 18th, which is a Tuesday, of course? So moved. Second, Selberg. Council Chair Kyle has made that motion. Second by Councilor Selberg. Thank you. A roll call, please. Council Member Staley? No. Er Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Neitzert? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Selberg? Yes. Starr? Yes. That has passed 7 to 1. Thank you. Item 33. A resolution including certain contiguous territory within the corporate limits of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, Annexation 6657-2017, Westwood Valley Phase 3, West 41st Street, and South Ellis Road. Uh, the applicant and owner here is Rick Dunlop with uh, Westwood 8 LLC. Uh, it's located west of South T. Ellis Road and north of West 41st Street, kind of west of the Sanford uh, Sports Center out there. Um, it's roughly 40 acres in size, and the purpose of this uh, annexation is they're looking at to, to continue to construct uh, their single-family residential uh, neighborhood out there in Westwood Valley. Water and sewer will be extended from the south, and then access will be from Laverne Whip Street once that's extended from the east. Jason, thank you. Did anybody want to engage the council on this topic? Councilors? Yes, Councilor, uh, um, I'm losing it. Councilor Neitzert. Thank you, thank sir. You. Thanks. My apologies. Can, that's fine. Can can you can they get this portion done without a lift station? Because they're right on the edge where there's some other property that they have that they would have to do a lift station temporarily. Yep. Good question. Yep. We look we look through that our sanitary sewer division. They have to provide the modeling to make sure that all of this is sewerable. 
um, they have provided that. Otherwise, we wouldn't uh, move forward with an annexation if we can't sewer it all. So they can get all of it. I think they probably have to do some slab on grades as they start falling to the west, but it should be all sewerable. So. Okay, thanks. <laughs> I'll make a motion to approve Neitzer. Second. Councilor Neitzer, thank you. And uh, Councilor Chair Kiley, thank you as well for saying that. If no other discussion, a roll call, please. Council Member Staley? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Kiley? Yes. Neitzer? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Selberg? Yes. Starr? Yes. That has passed 8 to 0. Thank you, Council. Is there any other new business, folks? Very good. I know you've had a long day already. Thank you for your service. Could I get a motion to adjourn? We'll move to adjourn. Been a motion to adjourn. It has been seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much, counselors. This meeting is adjourned. Make it a great night, Sioux Falls.